In this lesson, I'm going to talk about the kernel and range of a transformation. Okay, so the uh, let T be a linear transformation from the vector space V to the vector space W. So the kernel, the kernel in this case is basically the null space. So they use the word kernel whenever uh, whenever we deal with the uh, the linear whenever we deal with the linear transformation. So the kernel is basically just the, the collection of all vectors in V that get mapped to the zero vector. And the zero vector lies in, in the vector space W. And the range of T, the range of the linear transformation is the set of all vectors belonging to W uh, such that those vectors X get mapped to, to W uh, for, for the X that belong into the vector space V, okay? So here's a nice example from Calculus 1, okay? So let V be a vector space of all real valued functions defined on the closed interval AB with the property that, they're, that they are differentiable and the derivatives are continuous on that same interval. And let W be the vector space of all continuous functions on that closed interval. And let D be a linear transformation from the vector space V to the vector space W. Okay, that changes f into its derivative. So based on those, we want to find the kernel and the range of d. Okay, so let's first verify that this is a that we have a linear transformation here for the operation d. Okay, so remember that if we take the if we take the derivative of f plus g. That's the same thing as taking the derivative of f, then taking the derivative of g, so we can separate those, okay? Secondly, okay, so that's the first uh, property of a linear transformation. The second one was the scalar property, where you have, right, if you take the derivative of the constant, so let c be the constant, if you have a constant multiplied by the function, then you can take out that constant from the, from the derivative. Okay, so both of these, so both of these satisfy, right, the linear transformation property. Okay, so these are basically forming that superposition principle. Okay, so now let's find the kernel of D. Okay, so we're working with, right, so F here is the uh, derivative, sorry, acting as the derivative function. Okay, so the derivative function is taking the is taking the uh, set of functions from V to W, okay? In order to find it, so the kernel, the, the kernel of the space will be the functions that get mapped to zero. So in this case, it's gonna be the set of constants. Because when you take the derivative of a constant, that gives you zero. For example, the derivative of minus five with respect to X will give you zero. Okay, so the kernel, okay, so the kernel of D is the set of constants. On, defined on A, for A to B, okay? So this is the kernel for this type of, uh, for this particular linear transformation. Okay, the range, okay? Okay, so the range of D. So in the problem, okay, in the, in the, in the example here, we're letting D be the transformation from v, v, from v to W. Okay, so the, okay, so V, right, so V is consistent of the, is a vector space of functions, okay? And then W is the, so what's getting from V to W is through the derivative, okay? So, and also we're assuming that we're working with, right, we're working, we're letting W be the vector space of all continuous functions. Okay. So that means the range of D is going to be the set of all continuous functions defined on that, on that particular interval. Okay. So, so the range of D is the set of all 
continuous functions on define on a a to b okay 